I have a confession to make. It was in 2009, on a rainy day, that I was sitting in a car. It was not just any day, and it was not just any car. That day would redefine how I saw myself. It was the day of my practical driving test. So I had practiced several months, and I passed the theoretical test without any mistakes. So I was pretty confident I would pass that test. But I didn't. I felt so ashamed, I wanted the ground to open up and swallow me. You see, by now, I kind of recovered from that failure. Um, I realized you can still, be, still fail that test and be asked to give a TEDx talk. Um, <laughs> But you see, back then, this was really horrible for me because I was not used to failing. I was used to being a very good student, bringing home very good grades. School was easy for me because memorizing was a piece of cake. So basically, my strategy before an exam was two days before, I would start studying, cram everything into my brain, write the test, the upside usually a good grade, the downside, I forgot everything again. Yes, raise your hands if you have felt that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you see, so up until that day, I thought I was a good student. But that day, I realized I didn't know how to learn. I'm here today to talk to you about how to learn, or rather, how not to. To explain you that, let me give you a little bit more context. So fast forward to 2014, I had completed my international management degree and I started working at a digital agency with software developers. And I remember very well how one of the first meetings I felt like this. I didn't understand a word they were saying. And, um, as always, when presented with a challenge, I decided to learn. So I went back to university and I attended a computer science course. So we were sitting there copying the code that the professor was writing. That was kind of boring, but okay. But then a test came up, which was, by the way, on paper, programming on paper. And there I realized memorizing doesn't work anymore. I needed to understand. So I passed that test, but somehow the whole learning experience didn't feel satisfying. It was way too theoretical and didn't help me really like communicate with the developers at the agency. And also my classmates said, well, I guess programming, that's just not for me. I guess I'm not smart enough. That triggered something in me because I really believed Programming is an important language to learn, and I believe with the right learning experience, people would like to learn it. And the right experience I defined as follows. So it should be very hands-on, not eight hours just sitting and copying. Then it should be coaches and teachers who actually work in the industry. And last but not least, it should be a project at the end instead of an exam on paper. So I created that learning experience uh, in 2016. We founded the school. And up until now, we had about 350 people taking uh, classes. And even though they enjoy the learning experience, at the beginning, they still struggle. And at first, I didn't understand why. Like, it didn't make any sense. The learning experience was so much better, right? And, um, but then it dawned on me, I realized they didn't, know how to, they didn't know how to learn, just like I didn't know how to learn. So let me take you on a journey of one of our learners and illustrate the three-step learning process. Let me introduce to you Ben. He's a business professional. He's 32 years old. He's a very active and curious guy. And um, he has an MBA, and he works in a software uh, consultancy company and he leads a developer team there and he doesn't speak their language 
So he decides he wants to learn their language and learns to code. So he joins one of our classes. So first step, first day. First step is about trying. So he sits in class, listens attentively, diligently takes notes, but then we ask them to do the hands-on exercise. And all of a sudden, he doesn't feel so comfortable anymore. Like this code looks so cryptic and he doesn't understand it all and yeah, he's a bit overwhelmed. So he thinks to himself, well, let me just copy paste everything from the tutorial. Hmm. Yeah, this is good progress. It's actually not that hard. To, to give you a picture of how this looks like, it's as if you would be sitting in a car leaning back and the car is kind of on autopilot. Second step is about failing. So sooner or later, something doesn't work. Maybe Ben forgot to add a bracket or wrote something uppercase instead of lowercase. And yes, these details matter when you write code. So he's, he tries to find the bug, that's how a mistake is called when writing code, but he doesn't find it and he gets increasingly frustrated. And now he starts to think, yeah, this is actually hard. Third step about giving up. Ben still hasn't found the mistake and he gets increasingly frustrated. He doesn't just think this is hard, he starts to think this is too hard for me. And Kind of the teacher notices how he looks resigned and asks him, hey, Ben, what is it that you don't understand? And Ben just says, I don't get that topic. And the way he said that, you realize he has given up. As I said before, it's not Ben's fault that he didn't know how to learn. It's how he learned it in school. So first, kind of showing up, memorizing the things, getting spoon-fed all the information, that was enough for him. He never really needed to try to understand. And second, failing was not an option. When he failed, he got punished with a bad grade, or he could even lose his job. And third, giving up was kind of an option, because when he was bad in math, the teacher just always told him, yeah, well, maybe math is not your subject. Luckily, Ben is not alone, so he meets Lisa. Lisa is one of our programming coaches. She's a professional programmer. She's 20 year years old, and uh, she develops webs and applications for clients. And she actually taught herself to program, and she just loves sharing her knowledge and passion with people who started learning. So she saw that Ben struggled in this three-step process and she goes with him again through the three-step process. First, about trying. She sees that Ben just copy-pasted everything and she tells him that doesn't make any sense. He should rather go line by line and really try to understand. So Ben does that and all of a sudden he has lots of questions. He like, how is this connected to that and why is this that way? Lisa smiles. Because now she realizes Ben is actively sitting in a driving seat and actively driving his learning experience. Second step about failing. Lisa shares with Ben that professional programmers sometimes spend two hours, sometimes four hours, sometimes even days trying to find bugs and solve them. So, she, like failure is just part of the process for them. She just accepted it as normal to getting to a good end result. And she tells Ben, hey, look at mistakes at a different way. Mistakes are basically a gift for, of learning. Because every time you make a mistake, it's kind of an invitation to dig deeper and learn something new. Third step about giving up. Lisa tells Ben, 
prog learning to program is just hard. It doesn't matter how smart you are. So she shares with her, so he shouldn't take it like personally, and she shares with him her strategy when she encounters a really hard problem. She basically reformulates the problem as a question, asks it very specifically, and looks for the answer. Be it asking a colleague or, or looking online. At the end of the program, students share what they learned. And Ben, just like many other students said, I learned to Google. And at first I was like, what? That's all you learned in the whole program? But then I realized what they meant by that. It's basically taking a very hard problem, reformulating it as a question, and looking for the answer. And uh, yeah, in the times where we are surrounded by a massive amount of information, we can't know it all. But what we can do is really know where to look for the right uh, piece of information in a short amount of time. I love seeing how our students transform during the three-step um, cycle, from first being hesitant to then being frustrated and then even thinking of giving up to at the end telling me confidently, hey, I might not get this yet, but I'm getting there. In my eyes, programmers and our students are heroes. Not because they know how to program, but because they learned to learn. It was not just Ben that went through this three-step cycle. We saw it over and over again. And actually, I also realized for myself lately, when I tried to learn something new, like how to run a business or acro yoga or um, trying to find my way in a new city by getting lost, this holds true. So note to self. First step is really about actively sitting in a driving seat and driving the learning experience by trying to understand. Second step is about seeing mistakes as a gift of learning. And third step, some things are just hard and giving up is not always an option. But reformulating the hard problem as a question and looking for the answer might be. If you go over and over throughout this circle, again and again and again throughout your life, you will add lots of experiences and lots of learnings. Actually, this is not a fancy new way of seeing learning. Already the philosopher Aristotle said, 350 before Christ, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. We are surrounded by so much change, where in fact, the only constant is change. How can we embrace that change? We are surrounded by so many complex problems to be solved. How do we approach that? The futurist Alvin Toffler once said, the illiterate of the 21st century won't be the ones who cannot read or write, but it will be the ones who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Our education system, I believe, will not change very quickly. But I believe what we can change is how we approach learning. Do we sit actively in a driving seat? Imagine what world we could live in if everybody knew how to learn. Will you be a lifelong learner? <laughs>